Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we are going to introduce ourselves to class-based components as well as JSX. All right, so in the previous tutorial, we rendered out an H1 tag with the text of hello world. So we just bring this here. You can see standard web page H1 tag with hello world. Nothing special. But there's actually an easier way and a more intuitive way, and that is with JSX. So what is JSX? JSX is just an HTML-like syntax, which allows creating our user interfaces a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is we are going to convert this into JSX. So I'm just going to comment this out and let's go ahead and create a new element. And all we're going to do is have an H1 tag and wrap it around hello world. And we'll say hello world JSX, okay? Now this might look like HTML, but it's not. This is actually JSX and it's a lot more easier to read than using this. And it's a lot more intuitive since web developers already know what HTML looks like. So now if I go ahead and save this and bring this here, See, hello world, JSX. Okay, same exact result. Now, to prove this even more, let us go ahead and comment this out. And what we're going to do is create an unordered list. So we'll create a new element here. We'll use react.createElement. And the first argument is what we want to render out. So what we're going to do is have an unordered list. Second argument, we are not going to pass any data. So we'll set that to null. And the rest of the arguments are the children or the stuff that you want to put within this unordered list. So what we're going to do is let us give us some space. And we're going to use react.createElement. And the element we want to create is a list item. And once again, we're not going to pass any data. And what we want to put within that list item is, let's say, one. And let's do this two more times. So now if I was to save this, let's take a look at what happens. We have an unordered list with one, two, and three. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do this with JSX. So let's go ahead and comment this out. And let's write our JSX expression. So we're just going to say const element, create our unordered list. and put our list items. So we'll have one, two, and three, okay? So now we'll just save this. You'll see that we'll, we'll get the same exact result, okay? So that's the whole reason behind JSX. It's just to allow us to create UIs a lot easier. And it's very familiar to what everyone knows, which is HTML. And one point to point out is that behind the scenes, the Create React app has set up Babel for us. And if you don't know what Babel is, is a transpiler. So in other words, it takes code like this JSX and behind the scenes, it converts it to JavaScript because ultimately web browsers only understand JavaScript. If you were to give a web browser this, it wouldn't know what JSX is, so it wouldn't run. So if I hit control B and we could take a look at node modules, you can see that Babel is being used behind the scenes. Okay. And one more thing I should mention is since JSX ultimately gets converted into this, we need to always import react in order to use JSX. Okay. So even though you're not explicitly using react, Ultimately, this will get converted into react.createElement. So if I was to get rid of this statement, let's save this 
and we can actually bring up the terminal. You can see right here it's complaining, hey, React must be in scope when using JSX. So let's close that and let us uncomment that. All right, so now from here, let's talk about components. So what components are is a way to break down our web page into smaller UI. So imagine if all we had was what we've done so far. In other words, we would have to create our entire website within this one element and then tell React DOM to render out that element. It would be a nightmare. You wouldn't be able to maintain this code. So here comes components. So what I'm going to do is let us go ahead and hit control B, bring up the Explorer. Let me get rid of this. We're going to go within the source folder and we're going to create a new file and we're going to call this app.js. Okay. Now within this app.js file, we are going to be using JSX. So we're going to have to import React. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a class based component. So let's come down here. We're going to say class app. And what we're going to do is extend from react dot component. Okay. So we're extending from the components class. Next, what we need is a render method. So this method is required. So every single class component needs a render method. And this render method must return JSX. So I'm just going to say return. And for now, let's just return an H1 tag with the text of app component. Okay, so this is our app component, very simplistic. Now what we need to do is export this app component so we can import it within our index.js file. So we'll just say export default app. Okay, so let's save this. Let us go back to our index.js file. And what we need to do is import this component. So we called it app and it's from our app file. All right. So now let us get rid of this element since we're not going to render it. And what we want to do is render the app component. Now it's important to realize that user defined components must begin with a capital. You can't say app component like that. It has to be capital. And from here, we're just going to save it and let's take a look at the result. So you see now that our app component is being rendered out. So let's go back and let's actually hit control B. You might actually see this in a few different varieties. Some people don't like to extend react dot component like this. So what they do is they do a named import. So we come back here and we have these curly braces. And what we're going to do is take out component from our react package. And then what you can do is replace react component with component like so. And if I was to save this, you will get the same result. So works perfectly fine. Next thing that you might see, Again, I'm showing you all the different examples because different people like to do things differently. Instead of separating these into two different lines, I guess, or two different statements, they like to combine it. So you might see export default like so. And let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we can save this. And you see we got the same exact result. Now, personally, uh, I kind of like this syntax with uh, importing React and then doing a named import for component. I don't necessarily like this uh, syntax, but you guys could do whatever you guys want. But they are equivalent. All right, so now I want to go over some JSX rules. So right here within this return statement, 
This is all fine and dandy by having an H1 tag and app component. But let's say I want to render out two different things. So let's say I want an H1 tag and an H3 tag. So I'll say H3 tag, all right? So if I was to save this, we're going to get an error. So let's bring up the terminal and it shows you the error. It says adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped within an enclosing tag. So what does this mean? It means you can only return one thing. You can't have two JSX elements and return them. So one way to get rid of that error is to actually wrap these two tags that we want to render with n and div. So now if I was to save this, and let's take a look at the render out properly, you can see that this works perfectly fine. Now, there's more rules, so let's go over that. We're not gonna cover every single JSX rules within this tutorial, but we'll cover the main ones, is sometimes you're not going to always see developers or people program like this. A lot of times you're gonna see them put parentheses like so, And they might copy this and do a return like this. So now if I was to save this, this works as well. You see, we get the same exact result. Now, the reason for doing this is because this is a JavaScript thing, is if you try to do a return statement, but you don't have anything after that return statement. So let's say I get rid of these parentheses and I try to return like this and save it, we're gonna get an error. And that's because in JavaScript, when you have a return statement like this and nothing after it, JavaScript is automatically gonna put a semicolon. So that's what it's doing internally. So there's two ways to solve that. One is the first way I showed you, which was to put the tag div in this case on the same exact line. And we can just save this. You see that we're not gonna get any errors. It works perfectly fine. Or the other way, which I showed you, which was just to use parentheses. Now, in most cases, you're gonna see most people do it this way with the parentheses instead of the other way, okay? So let us talk about one more rule and is that all JSX elements must have a closing tag. So for example, div has a corresponding closing tag. So everything's fine, h1, same thing. So if I have, let's say I wanna put a break between the H1 tag and the H3 tag. And I don't have a closing tag, so this is valid HTML, but this is not valid JSX. So if I was to save this, you see failed to compile. So you must always have a closing tag when working with JSX. So like that, hit save. And there you go. You see, we have a break here. All right. So this is pretty much where I want to leave off with. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.